Took myself back to the caddy yard in college, listening to two guys in their 70s argue about their handicaps. That's what I was... <laughs> I spent a lot of time my college years uh, on a golf course. I caddied for several summers, and I would listen to these guys piss and moan and complain and chug beers and argue handicaps. And it just, I went back in time last night towards the end of that debate. I'm like, am I sitting here at Ridgewood Country Club or am I watching two guys who want to be president for the next four years? What am I watching here? Or it's like, you know, you and your boy who are each 25 handicaps after a half a dozen pops following your round wonder who had the better score. I mean, that's that's what you were watching last night. It was hysterical. It was also, you know, not ideal for the country, but that's beside the point right now. So it was at the very end of the debate, if you made it, all the way to the end of the debate last night, when each guy was asked about, you know, their age and what the American people can expect from one of these two guys who will be in the White House into their 80s. And Donald Trump, in classic Trump fashion, brought up his health and related it to his golf game. It's not even senior. Two regular club championships. To do that, you have to be <laughs> quite smart, and you have to be able to hit the ball a long way. And I do it. He doesn't do it. He can't hit a ball 50 yards. He challenged me to a golf match. He can't hit a ball 50 yards. Uh, I think I'm in very good shape. I feel that I'm as in good a shape as I was 25, 30 years ago. Actually, I'm probably a little bit lighter. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Guy can't hit the ball 50 yards off the tee. Let me see your seven iron, Joe. I got a seven iron right here for you, Donald. And then Biden gets asked about, you know, Trump's comments. And um, he basically insinuates he's fat. He lies about his weight and then insists he's a six handicap and then reverts it back to an eight. You can see he is six foot five and only 223 pounds or 235 oh. pounds. Oh, my gosh. Well, you said six four, two hundred. Well, anyway, that's it. You anyway, just take a look at what he says he is, and take a look at what he is. Oh, look, I'd be happy to have a driving contest with him. The reason I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, down to a six. Uh, and but by the way, I told you before, I'm happy to play golf with you if you carry your own bag. Think you can do it? That's the biggest lie that he's, he's a six handicap of all. <laughs> I was an eight handicap. Yeah. Eight, Never. but I have you know how many. How, I've seen uh, you swing. I know you swing. Yeah, let's let's, let's not act like children. President Trump, we're going to turn. Let's around. not act like children. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! I like that goodness. ship sailed. <laughs> that sailed about an hour and twenty nine minutes ago. <laughs> let's oh. not act like children. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh. I'm just sitting there with the old popcorn like, holy cow, get me another bourbon on the rocks. Which, by the way, is what I was drinking last night as I was watching this thing. I couldn't help myself. All right, so just so we're all on the same page, the USGA's Golf Handicap Information Network has Joe Biden as a 6.7 handicap, which goes to show you. I mean, you can put in whatever the hell you want into these handicap systems. Uh, However... The USGA GHIN app says Joe Biden hasn't played a round of golf since 2018. The majority of his rounds were played in 2013 and 2014, at least the ones that he's put into the system. And that's how this works. Trump's handicap, 2.5. His most recent round coming in 2021. Once again, not his most recent round, but the most recent round he has input to the system. And the majority of his rounds put into the USGA handicap index um, came in 2014. So, do I think that Biden's a 6'7 handicap? Couldn't it? No. Gosh, no. Holy, I mean, no. He's probably playing from the ladies' tees at this point, if he's playing at all. Do I think Trump's a 2'5? You know, I suppose it depends how much he fluffs it up in the rough. 913 408 7957. But it was like, of all the things that Joe Biden said last night, Trump nearly fell off the stage when Biden said he was a six handicap. If you have not seen his reaction, <laughs> I mean, like nothing of all the things that Biden said last night, the one thing that Trump could not contain his hilarity at was literally Biden saying he was a six handicap. It almost knocked him over. 
of all the things the guy said last night, it was the six handicap line that almost had Donald Trump falling off the freaking stage. Unbelievable. 913-408-7957. I also don't know if bragging about lowering your handicap while in office is really a good thing to brag about, but hey, I'm here. Next debate, let's do it at the uh, first tee box of Kansas City Country Club. We'll have Tom Watson moderate it. What do you think? 913-408-7957. Wes in Gladstone. What's up, Wes? Yeah, Pete, I, I think uh, Trump missed two golden opportunities by not sticking to what the uh, question was. The first one was when he talked about, I think it might have been taxes, but whenever Joe said everybody's got to pay their fair share, oh, how about your son? Is he paying his fair share? And how about the fact that on several occasions your family members have gotten checks from Chinese companies and then the next day, they write you a check, which uh, you say is a loan. And then the second one was when they ask about the age thing. Trump should have worked it into basically just look at the videos of a Joe. You know, first he should have said something, you know, that he didn't wish Joe ill health and, you know, but somehow set the thing up so he wasn't being too morbid about it. But saying, hey, you're not voting for Joe. You're voting for Kamala Harris. Mm-hmm. I think both of those points would have been very good for him to make. And, he, you know, and instead of answering what the questions were to make those points, he'd go off on something else. But, yeah, just Joe's facial expressions during the whole thing were painful to watch man i mean that that's that's what killed him no one's gonna remember what what trump said or what biden said for the most part i will have it burnt into my mind for as long as i'm doing this the look on joe's face throughout the night and it was a look of confusion it was a look of a guy who should be starring in a nursing home commercial. And I don't say that to be mean. I mean, literally, he was standing there. His mouth is half open. He looks confused. And I couldn't believe, honestly, that CNN put those side-by-sides up as much as they did. And there were a couple of times when it really got bad when they panned out of it. Like, they went from the side-by-side while Trump was talking to a wide shot because... Joe just looked so out of it. He did not look like he was present in the moment. So it's not going to be as much about what he said. And trust me, there were plenty of things. And, you know, we played a lot of it of things he said where he just lost his train of thought. But the look on his face as Trump's talking is the thing that I can't get out of my mind. And I can't unforget. I mean, I'll forget some of the lines. I'll forget some of the things he said, and we all will. But that look of just confusion, that look of not knowing where he is, kind of staring in outer space with the mouth half open thing, catching flies. That's where you say to yourself, what is going on? It's unbelievable. Bill O'Reilly will be here on KCMO next hour. Bridget's in St. Joe. Bridget, good morning. Got a minute? It's all yours. What's happening? Good morning. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, Bridget. Um, I turned on CBS last night post-debate just to see um, what they were saying, and they were for they were at a loss for words. CBS was, which I never watch CBS, but uh, they said, quote, unquote, this was not Joe Biden's best performance. <laughs> that's Quote. that's nice. That's and, generous. And a long uh, silence. I think they were at a loss of words as to what what exactly to say. Mm-hmm. Because they've been covering for this man for three and a half years now, and it's all coming to fruition. But they can no longer cover for this man. And whoever thought putting Joe Biden on a debate stage without a script is a good idea to be out of a job this morning. Yep. 
You know, I just keep coming back to thank you, Bridget. Have a great weekend. I just think keep coming back to the fact that maybe they thought Trump wouldn't accept the debate on their terms. And he did. And it cost him last night in a big way.